Well, I'll tell you why we did it that way, <laughs> which really came down to the laws in the state of Texas at the time, which have been changed. But at the time, it was a requirement in the state of Texas that the initial visit be done in the office, okay? And not wanting to lose my medical license, I obeyed the law. Um, they have since changed the law. The, the nice part about headache medicine, what really lends itself to telemedicine, is that for most patients, especially in follow-up, there's not much need for an examination, right? So once you've done the initial examination, usually you can feel pretty comfortable that you didn't miss any worrisome cause of their headache. Um, but I still prefer to do the initial evaluation in person, if possible, um, because I like to look in the eyes, which is impossible to do by telemedicine. Um, and I just think it's important because occasionally there are other causes of headache that that people have and they're referred in with a diagnosis of migraine or chronic migraine, they turn out to not have chronic migraine, they have something else. Um, so I personally find it very helpful to examine patients in the office, but you know, for people that live remotely and don't have access to a headache specialist, you know, perhaps they could get their eye exam done locally um, and then whoever is on the other end uh, of the telemedicine performing the visit you know, could use that information. And even in the study for patients who were randomized to get their visits by telemedicine, they were responsible for getting a blood pressure measurement and getting a weight um, the week of their visit. You know, so there are data that we'd like to have regardless of whether it's done in the office or whether it's done remotely.